Hey my loves, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Netta and everything. Sorry for the sorry for just the in and out, y'all. I'm really trying. I'm just coming to y'all with this cute little 90s look, this dark lip, and these huge huge lashes which i don't know if i like or not i don't really think i like them i just want to come up on here and just do my makeup not really like um focus on the makeup but focus on um the commentary so i'm gonna be talking about what i've learned in my 20s even though i am 22 i do think that i've learned a lot of good lessons y'all mm -hmm. a lot of lessons and i just want to share it with you guys so you guys can probably take a piece from it and kind of just grow. If you're not in your 20s, if you're in high school or if you're 30 or whatever, I think that you can still take away from what I'm going to tell y'all. So without further ado, let's go to the video. Just want to let you guys know, I am a Cancer. That is my sun sign. My moon sign, I think, is also a Cancer. I have to look it up because I really don't know. I know I used to know it before, but I think I have a sun sign i know i have a sun sign cancer i have a moon i think it's a cancer and i think my other one's a pisces i'm very emotional me being a very emotional in my face or in your face cancer i think does more harm than good one of my lessons i put on my list of things i learned in my 20s is to control your emotion everything isn't as big as you would think it is Everything isn't as deep as you'll think it is. I've had a hard time looking at the bigger picture. You know, I'm just looking into the now. Like I couldn't look past myself being 25. Like I can't look past me being, me possibly being 30 one day. I couldn't look past that. And I think that that was a big issue for me. I'm a very emotional person. And it took me this year, um, this month actually to learn to control my emotions learn to realize that things aren't as deep as you would think it is what all's going on in your life right now in your 20s and some of y'all if y'all watching the high school what's going on in your life right now does not matter the relationships the friendships the, the arguments with your parents like none of that stuff is going to matter literally in a few a few years that was my problem i really just thought that everything was so deep everything was so important relationships mattered and everything was just I just needed to be so caring of situations when I really didn't I am a cancer learning to control my emotions was very hard learning to I'm not gonna say like not give a fuck but learning to just really realize that things aren't as bad you know look at other people who've had it worse people are like in the world dying people don't even know their, where their next meal is gonna come to come from, I mean. And stuff like this shouldn't matter. The other thing that I've learned is that social media is not real life. Sometimes we get caught up, especially us women, we get caught up in the social media life. On social media, you wanna show the best part of yourself. Who wants to show like them in a bad situation? Who wants to show yourself in a bad light. I'm not gonna say I felt a way about, but I kind of did because I see women who are in their early 20s or just in their 20s in general and they, they, I feel like they have their life together and I feel like they know what they want in life and they are successful, beautiful. And sometimes you start to compare yourself to those people. It starts to weigh on you how much you're not like them. So because of that, I had to unfollow a, a plethora of like, even just celebrities and people that I know, not because of jealousy or everything else, but I, but because I think that I have a tendency of trying to mirror or look at myself like, wow, am I just not, um, you know, on the right track? Because I see these people at 19, 20, they just, maybe, you know, maybe they have a whole bunch of success. I tend to look at myself and say, wow, like, and, and it's not purposely, but you really do tend to look at yourself and say, wow, like, is something wrong with me? Why I'm not successful, you know? Um, so I had to learn that social media, of course, is not real life. Everything that you see on social media is not what's going on. All these folks that's on here thinking that they're living life and they're balling, they're most likely probably broke and they're using their last set of money 
just to impress the masses, which is stupid. But we are in a social media driven world. We have to promote on social media. We have to live. We have to show that we're great and everything is perfect. Unfortunately, a lot of us, including myself, contribute to the aesthetic of the minimalist, the clean girl aesthetic, you know, and we don't even know that we do. But um, because of that, because I felt like I was being very impressionable, I decided to unfollow certain people, follow more positive things. A lot of the social media, like news outlets and stuff, I just feel like wasn't really serving me. It was just a whole bunch of drama and mess. I don't think anything like that was really helping me. It just indulged myself into more drama and, you know, sometimes you need to just unplug from all of those things. Have time for yourself, learn yourself and love yourself. Something else I learned in my 20s is to heal first. Heal first. Take time out to heal. It is detrimental even to heal. I am not perfect. I've done my fair share of relationships and situationships and a whole bunch of just hoopla when I felt like I could have healed first. I felt like if I was healed first, a lot of situations that I uh, I was in wouldn't have gone left or um, I wouldn't, I would see the red flags or see the, the issues and everything else. And I'm not perfect. I am not a perfect person. I am far from perfect, but I do see that I'm not the perfect person. And I could, I have contributed to the demise of my relationships, some of them, but I do think that if I would have healed first, if I would have took time out to just be by myself and truly healed, I think that I would have a little bit more self-love at the time. I think I would have way more self-love and I didn't have to go through a lot of things like I've went through to really find that myself. To be honest, um, I only count three relationships in my life as real relationships. And all three of them, I feel like have molded me into the person that I am today. And I do think though, the spacing on those relationships, I should have healed before the start of the next one. I should have took time out. And I know like in your 20s, and social media is such a bad outlet on letting us know like, like on Twitter and Instagram, it's, oh, you know, it's the whole thing about, oh, I don't care. Or, oh, if, if you leave, I find somebody else. Oh, if you leave, girl, you can just go and I'm gonna find somebody else. That's not a problem. Like the social media has really been the demise of a lot of people's relationships everyone's just so full of ego everybody is so oh i don't care i don't care and they want to seem like this like this robot of a person because they don't a lot of people don't want to address hurt they don't like to address feelings and as much um emotional as i am i was a part of that i didn't want to address my um my trauma that was really a problem for me. I also go down on my foundation because I have like these rings around my neck. Transparent moment, I hate them. And I hate like I, I have to go on my chest sometimes too. But I do have a Liberian friend. I actually have three Liberian people that I know in my life. I got I got like a, a really good Liberian friend um, in Cali. One that's here in Germany with me and another one that's my hairstylist. And they told me that in Liberia, rings around like your neck area is like beautiful or something so even though to me i might not like it but to them they think it's just so beautiful it makes me so happy i really don't like um harboring on things if i feel like i can replace you i'm going to replace you because you're not gonna see me like in my feelings even though i'm like the i am so in my feelings all the time i just felt like i didn't want no one to see that side of me so i literally would move on in 2.5 seconds and would not care knowing that I'm hurt, knowing that I'm giving this next person 
hurt, you know? And this year was really that lesson for me was to really sit down and acknowledge that I wasn't, I'm not okay. Not acknowledge that I'm not okay. And I think that I was really just pressed on wanting to just not give a fuck or wanting to show that I don't need you. And it really hit me, you know? When you go to bed at night, sometimes you really realize like, wow, I'm, I'm not okay. And I need to have time out for myself. Never put somebody in front of you. Never make their problems your problems, okay? Learn to be by yourself. Love yourself. And that's what I would say. Oh, the next thing actually is self-love, ironically. I had a problem with self-love for a while. Um, growing up, um, I am a dark-skinned woman. It was not nice. It was not nice. I did not like going to school. I didn't like, I was the butt of the joke. I was, oh, you so this and you so dark. And it was such a joke back in the day. Now, oh, we're beautiful Nubian goddesses. But just a while ago, y'all was calling us African booty scratchers and we was, we was monkeys. So I'm very concerned on how we went from that to that, but okay. It's actually hilarious how it shifted literally the world shifted and now we're not darkies and we're not all these terms anymore now we're oh my god i love your skin and you're so beautiful and i love dark skin women and all these things but growing up um i didn't like i i i had a form of internalized self-hate because of you know how i was treated sometimes i didn't see myself as beautiful as much as my mom and my family would tell me oh you're so beautiful we love your complexion everything else i did not truly feel that for myself up until i think actually i officially loved my skin i think at 20 and i'm 22 so me battling myself and everyone just oh you're so beautiful and compliments and you can compliment people as much as you want but they have to really know that in their heart and I think my 20s, or I think, yeah, I think when I turned 20, maybe 19, but I think it's, I really think it's 20, I realized my complexion is beautiful. It took me a lot of things to really see that about myself. My family is very, we're dark skin, we're brown skin, we're light skin, like we're, we're all the things and no one has made me feel uncomfortable in my family. It never really was my family who, who, who I, harbor this insecurity i don't know where that insecurity came from to be honest but i had it i had it for years on end i think one day i really really felt it and i really accepted who i was and i completely fell in love with myself i love myself i love my face i love my skin complexion like i want to get darker like i i love who I have become in such a short amount of time. We literally just started living. It's not about the destination, it really is about the journey. So the next topic is fake friends. Um, I've had my share of fake friends. I don't wanna say fake friends, but people that like I just don't align with and for a good reason, you know. Um, I've had friends lie to me feel from me take the person that i was with i just had friends who i feel like weren't maybe weren't loyal to me or true to me and maybe on their end they can even say the same thing for me that's why i don't want to say like they're fake i just want to say like they, they don't align with what i align with um or maybe they weren't just loyal people um I do think in like this generation, it's really hard to make friends outside of like your own community or high school or something because I feel like in high school and in college, you have a sense of community and everyone just knows each other from way back when. So it's not as hard making friends, I think. I think once you get into the real world and like you, you leave your hometown and you fly across the world and even though I have a sense of community because of the military, I just think that it's, it is it is harder. It is harder making friends and um, keeping friends because everyone does their little turn here and then everyone leaves. So 
you make all these friends just for them to leave. And that's why I think that when I first got here, I had a whole bunch of friends. And then eventually everyone left and left and left. And then it's kind of just now it's like me and I have to start from square one again. And I'm okay with that. Cause originally, like I really was not going to meet anybody new because I don't like the sense of um, abandonment because like my best friends at home are literally my best friends I can call anytime and, and talk to them about anything and they'll be there for me. And I feel like in the new social media age, everyone is just on some, oh, I don't care. No one knows true friendship. And I think a lot of girls, they just wanna be friends just to be pretty. And that annoys me because why would you wanna be friends with me or someone else just because, oh, you take pretty pictures or oh, we can both be pretty together. What happens to you being a, a loyal person? If that's the only reason why we're friends is because we're both pretty and we both have the same aesthetic or whatever, that's not a friend. You're not really a friend. And if I can't trust you, outside of just okay we're pretty okay we can we can dress down we can go out like if i can't trust you as a person why would i be friends with you and i see a lot of girls nowadays they have like these social media friends and it's all about aesthetic it's literally oh we have the same amount of followers we have we go to the same places let's just be cute for a picture but the whole time both of them are just airheads and it's not nothing genuine I do think maybe sometimes things could be misunderstandings. I do believe in misunderstandings. We're not just gonna be friends just because just because we both are social media girls. That doesn't make any sense to me. And the friends that I'm, I'm making right now, I'm very happy that I put myself out there to find some girls. Right now, I think I'm having the most fun I've ever had in a long time. And I don't wanna go backwards, but I do want to say that in your 20s, just don't put relationships first. I do think that people that are in their 20s, they can, they can have a relationship, a meaningful one, and it can make sense, and y'all could skip down the street and be glorious together. But don't make that your focal point. And I was listening to this uh, audio on Instagram. I remember the gist of it. Um, basically, it was saying, use your 20s like a dressing room. Try on new things. Try on new friendships, relationships, hobbies, um, things that make you, things that inspire you. Try those things on. Don't worry about your 30s right now. You're in your 20s. Live your life and, and live in the moment. I would say um, financially, Make sure that you are saving up financially. I think that it's a very important time to start saving up in your 20s. But I do think that you only live once in your 20s. Travel, if you know that you're gonna get paid next week, and I don't know if this is bad advice, this is what I'm gonna do. If you know that you're gonna get paid next week and there's this once in a lifetime trip somewhere else, even if it's not once in a lifetime, just go, just go. Go out, go have fun. Yes, have an idea of the future, I do think you should have an idea of the future, but don't let that idea of the future, don't don't obsess over it. It's gonna work out. Everything is gonna work out. Put God first, put yourself first, put your dreams first, and everything will eventually work out. Don't force things, don't force things to happen, just allow things to flow. If you are a nurturer, uh, a caring person, it's not that easy. I'm a natural nurturer. I put my feelings on hold for people because I look at it like it was the other way around. How would they feel? Y'all see this in my hair? I'm not gonna say I stopped being a nurturer, but I had to really pause on a lot of things. And a lot of people, they're not gonna like the fact that one, either they can't get access to you because you cut them off, or they're gonna think that you switched up because you're worrying about yourself more. By the way, I'm using this, um, this, is, this is old. But I'm using this because I have curly lashes and it makes a difference when you put them upside down, you straighten them. So it's easy for me to put on lashes that way. Oh, I forgot my nose. Oh, shoot. Okay. Dang, this lash is way too big. I don't like how it's looking, hold on. One of the other topics I wanna talk about was um, depression. So 
in the summertime, I became very depressed. I was very depressed. Me and my best friend was very depressed, like real bad, like real bad. I don't know what came over me. I just thought that I was just not doing what I needed to do. I was so conflicted on my personal life, on my, my military career, and I was conflicted on um, my, my academic career. Ooh, y'all, I gotta brush these lashes in. And it made me so sad because I literally let it consume me to the point of depression. I was in a very sad place in my life and I didn't know what I could do to get out of it. I literally would go to work and just come home. I didn't have any social life anymore. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed in my house for probably two months. I'm lying, probably six weeks. Why am I just in my feelings about not being or not being at the place that I think I should be at. And I got into a very low place. And what took me out of it was realizing that I'm not in a bad place. This is the place that God has put me in. I was looking at social media again, see? And I realized that a lot of my friends from home graduated college, got their family, entering their careers and all those things. And I was just like, wow, like, look at me. And then I started to minimize all my accomplishments. And I feel like I've accomplished a lot. But I've started minimizing like, wow, these folks are, they got their degree and I haven't got my degree yet. And you know, I'm just like, wow, like, cause around 22, 23, you're graduating, you're graduating college. That's a big milestone. You're, you're going into the world, the real world, the civilian world. And for me, I was just so depressed. I was like, oh my God, like felt like the world was leaving me. Like I was the one that was, that was, that was on hold. As much time as my family and everyone else had to tell me, you're not on hold, you're not on hold. You were on the right track. I hate these lashes, by the way. I'm gonna try to brush them out, but I'm probably gonna do that at the end. As much as my friends would say, you are not on the, you are not, you know, slow down. This is your path, this is your path. I didn't believe it. This is not cute. Okay, what if I put it to the side like this? <laughs> mm. Y'all. Okay, I haven't done 25 millimeters in so long. I haven't even worn lashes like that in such a while that it's like, it's, yo. This is crazy. What was I saying? Until I finally realized, you know what? I am in the right place. I am okay. Everything's okay. Everything's to what God wants. That's when it started getting better for me. That's when I started, I feel like loving myself. I started not caring about what people have to say about me. I'm not gonna like lie, like things hurt me, but it's not as bad as it was before. Life is so much bigger than just uh, school. Life is bigger than friendships, relationships. Like life is an experience. I'm putting on some bronzer, y'all. Mm -hmm. The moral of this video is if you're in your 20s or if you're in high school watching this, life doesn't end when you graduate. Life goes on, things happen. It really is a time for everything. And it took me forever to realize that. This is my favorite part, y'all, my lip liner. Y'all see this in my hair? So I went over my lip a little too much on this side. So I'm gonna get like a little um, brush and some concealer and clean it up. Very 90s. Cause I'm just like, I don't know if I wanna put some color in the middle or just leave it how it is. So I'm not gonna do any color, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a clear gloss just in the middle. These lashes are really taking me out. These lashes are so, I'm trying, I'm really trying, I'm really trying. Look at my nails, y'all, by the way. I never even got to show y'all. I went to the salon and they really did it. It's so chic and I love them. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, this was a lot of information. You know, you might not um, absorb all of it, but the ones that you do absorb, just really take it to the heart and really understand where I'm coming from and everything. I don't like these lashes. I don't know how I feel. Let me know how y'all feel about these lashes, but I think they're way too, they're just too dramatic. I don't know how I feel about these. 
think they're just huge. Tell me how you feel about my lips. I love a dark lip, y'all. It just looks so sexy and just like, just the energy is just like ooh, pretty 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 and um yeah just make sure to follow me on all my social medias and i'll see y'all in the next one so bye.